Josh was worried about Connor. Ever since the phone call with his mother, he'd been withdrawn, moody. Josh understood how hard this was for Connor, or at least he tried to. He wasn't an expert on parental relationships by any standard, not having spoken to his own parents since he enlisted many years ago. And Connor's situation was messy and complicated, and Josh got that. But it affected him, Connor's mood, the cloud of darkness hanging around him. He'd had his flare-ups of his PTSD, more than in the previous months combined, and he struggled with his frustration over that. He wanted to say something to Connor, but he didn't want a repeat of last time when Lucas had died. Back then, Josh had worded it poorly, leading Connor to believe he was breaking up with him. He couldn't risk that again, because Connor had been hurt, deeply hurt, and Josh wasn't chancing it. No, he needed to figure out a way to say something without Connor taking it the wrong way. He could ask Inti to do it for him, but that seemed wrong. Connor had no issues with Josh's relationship with Indy at all anymore, but this was risking that acceptance. Plus, it didn't feel right to Josh to let Indy do his dirty work. You okay? Noah's voice broke into his thoughts. Josh looked up from the cupcake batter he'd been stirring mindlessly. Yeah. No. He sighed. (sighs) <sighs> kinda. Noah grabbed a seltzer from the fridge, then leaned against the counter. He's taking it hard, huh? Josh felt relieved that Noah knew what was troubling him. Yeah. I understand, but... It's affecting you. Do I say something? Josh asked, pushing the batter aside. Who cared about stupid cupcakes anyway? It was something he'd started to keep his mind busy. I'm so scared it'll come off as selfish. Noah nodded. I get that. But you're allowed to be a bit selfish here. I can see you struggling. Josh let out a deep, pent-up sigh. I am. I could use a scene, but Connor is in no state of mind to do one. Is it the pain you need or the sexual release? Noah asked, and Josh loved him for asking. Right now, the pain. We had sex this morning, but I need the endorphins a good session brings. Maybe you could call Master Mark and ask for his help, Noah suggested. If I may say something, and please forgive me if I'm horribly out of line. A voice spoke up and Josh jerked until he realized it was Wander, who had been posting by the back door. Josh had completely forgotten about him, used as he was by now to the man's quiet presence. Please. Josh said. Any suggestions? As soon as he'd asked it, he realized. How stupid. They had a dom right here. Me, Wander said simply, confirming Josh's line of thought. But please, feel free to say no. I'm offering. No obligation at all. Noah and Josh looked at each other. Josh had to admit the offer was tempting. The man was right here, which made it easy, and they could do it in his own playroom. Plus, he'd come to trust Wander and had gotten used to his presence. The man had seen him with Connor often enough to have an idea of what Josh liked and could take. I'll need to talk to Connor first, Josh said. He liked the idea, but what if Connor got upset or offended? How about you talk to Connor about Wander's offer, and I'll talk to him about the rest, Noah said. The first is between the two of you, but I think I may be able to help him process his feelings about his mother. Oh, I would so appreciate that. Thank you. Josh hugged Noah tight. He'd just let him go when his phone rang. When he saw it was Aaron, he debated letting it go, because he really wanted to talk to Connor about Wander. But then he decided not to. He couldn't risk it. Not with Aaron. Not when their relationship was still fragile. Who knew if Aaron called about something important? Hey, bro, he answered. Josh, Aaron said, his voice bubbling with excitement. I have wonderful news.